Hi beautiful humans, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Abigail and uh, Abby as well, you can call me either one. And I should probably say Abby because this channel is called Finding Abby, but anyways, we're back with another video. A series of things that you can control. Um, I our next topic is who you hang out with. Some insight on why who you hang out with is really important for, you know, leveling up. I'm gonna turn these on, hold on. I thought maybe that would be nice. I don't know, hold on. Okay, so why who you hang out with is important when you are trying to change your vibration, level up, and just create a uh, more self-supporting reality for yourself. You are the director of your narrative. So. I just wanted to let you know that people around you do affect you. Um, there are ways to protect yourself from energies. There are ways to um, support yourself in toxic situations. But does that mean shall we allow those in our life all the time? It is not recommended. Catch a breath. <laughs> How to take back that control into your life if you feel like there's people around you that are draining you. We all have friends and family that necessarily, like when we talk to them, it could be fairly negative or draining or, you know, it just doesn't really line up with your beliefs or your perspective. And sometimes that can um, rile us up a little bit or make us feel a little uncomfortable. Um, or we just keep putting ourselves back into situations with friends or relationships where we're in that phase where we kind of still want to hang out with people, but all of your friends may be toxic or um, not really on your same path. And uh, there could be that factor of loneliness where you may not necessarily be afraid to be alone, or maybe you are. Yeah. Okay, so there's like a shift between the video I started and me finishing that video. It was separate days and I really wasn't in, I think, the complete mind space to finish it that day. And I had a lot more better um, state of mind when I did the rest a different time. So that's why there's like a change in outfit and pay place and everything. I just had to like redo the video kind of. So I'm gonna keep some of the first part and then I'm gonna, you know, show you guys the rest. So thanks. First, on who you hang out with. It is really important to really decide who you hang out with carefully. I realized that most friends of mine that were not so good for me or ended up being very devious or spiteful, they all weren't really chosen friends. They kind of just happened. And there are some ways to kind of like avoid that. Or if it already happened, some ways to decide who is who and kind of like get rid of anything that you don't want. So the first thing that I wrote down for this was who you hang out with will affect your mood. So pay attention to how you feel when you hang around certain people. Do you feel, you know, joyful? Do you feel peaceful? Do you feel, I don't know, happy? Do you feel relaxed? Or do you feel stressed out? Do you feel manic? It, like you could feel happy, but just try to realize and decide whether that happiness is like manic like do you feel manic and kind of like crazy happy or do you feel relaxed happy there's a difference so like do they make you feel manic disturbed like you go home being in a bad mood do you feel negative do you feel drained pay attention to those things because those are really your first telltale signs if somebody is good for you to be hanging out with or not. Um, this is a really cliche thing that I've always went off of. The first five people in your circle will be um, pretty much where you are in 10 years. Like you, the average of those five people is where you're going to be in 10 years. So look at the kind of lives they're living or even if they're not there yet, I'm not saying bail on people that aren't successful or aren't doing everything correctly. Like, you know, like you can grow up with people, grow with people. You, I already said that and take people with you, 
but is it common no it's not common like i've had to leave more people behind than not so really when it comes down to that i guess portion of this topic really look at are these people bettering themselves do they care about their health do they care about their happiness do they want you know the similar things to what i want like you don't have to have the same goals but it certainly helps to have similar things in common when it comes to where you guys see yourselves because that just makes for a more strong friendship like like do i see them in my life with me five ten years from now and is it reasonable to see them in my life that long from now and are they taking reasonable actions and steps to achieve their what they want the next one i have is even in your differences your friends should still support you if you're succeeding in something or excited proud of something or you're just having a good day your friends should be happy and supportive and celebrate you just as they would be there for you on your bad days so let me just pause there and comment if you have your friends that are it's good that your friends are always there on your bad days do not get me wrong but there is a difference between you know you having really supportive friends that are there on your good and bad days and they treat you kind of the same like they treat you you know with love with care with you know communication and advice or whatever like whether you're celebrating something or whether you're distraught you know you should have this consistency and effort from your friends and it should be coming from a really loving place it shouldn't be like your friend cannot wait to just hear how terrible your life's going there are those friends that just love to see you in a negative place and then when it comes time to be supported and celebrated they can't stand it they cannot stand that you're happy they can't stand that something good happened to you they can't stand you're in a good mood and it's kind of hard because they won't always make it known it won't always be very obvious like they said that they hate that I'm happy. Like, no, it will never be like that. It'll always be like very passive aggressive at the most, but like, it's very subtle. Like it's more of a feeling like when you're happy or you're talking about something that makes you happy and they just look kind of, they just look kind of annoyed. Like they're just like, yeah, okay. Like you're, you're, yeah, that happened to you. Of course it did. Like, yeah, just like, or they're kind of really dismissive of like your happiness or like you accomplish something or you're excited about something and they're just kind of very dismissive. Like they don't really care or they just are irritated talking about it. And the second thing is really like if someone is really fake happy for you and they're not really there for you when you're sad. Like there's like those kind of friends too that like, like you're always there for them when they're upset and like stuff and then they only come around when things are good for you because they just want to take you know they just want to take your energy they just want to take your happiness they just want to you know they want to feed off you or you get a you know promotion or you get like a good break in money and they're like oh are we going out or whatever and then when you're upset you're going through it they're nowhere to be found so there's another that's another toxic back and forth traits of friends how do your friends treat you when you're down and how do they treat you when you're high, like high up? You're just like, some friends can be fake and thrive on your weakness. And then when you are happy, they don't seem as involved or happy for you. And they have to make it into a negative situation or bring something up that belittles you or takes away from your moment. So that is the rest of the things that I kind of wrote down for that. And that is totally true. Like, or there's the friends that like, you know, they're your friends. They're there in your negative moments. They're there in your positive moments. But are they really there? Like, when you're having a positive moment, are they engaged? Like, do they feel like, oh my god, that's awesome. Like, I'm so happy for you. Like, I love that you're utilizing your potential and you're just so, you know, you deserve this and all of this stuff. Or are they kind of like, they're kind of like, oh, I love that for you. Like, but they kind of seem like they actually hate that for you. You're like, I, you know, you're my friend. I know that they mean well. They're kind of like not really happy for you. So yeah, there's just like a few different combos. And honestly, just by me saying this, if you're watching, 
and I said one of these scenarios, just think of the first person that comes to mind and investigate it. And then I bet you any money that they probably are doing that because your intuition does not lie to you. So just trust it, okay? And then um, I just wanted to finish this video off by telling you, you are in control of who you hang out with. Like you have the authority over your life. Like you control how much energy someone gets from you. Like you control how much of their emotions they get from you. You need to take back your power from these people that aren't fulfilling your friendship needs. And it's okay to do that. It's not a doesn't make you a bad person, doesn't make you a bad friend. If anything, it makes you a good friend because you have standards for how you want to be treated. And that just shows other people that they're allowed to have those standards too. Like if you want friends that are supportive of you and, you know, they love you and, you know, they reciprocate what you give to them and they want to improve themselves and they want you to improve and they're there for all your wins and your losses and you know like you can have that like think about it that just goes hand in hand with a relationship as well like picture your best case scenario relationship and friendships right just picture it and you literally can have that like you can and even if you don't or there's no sign of you having that kind of like friendships or relationships it's okay because you're not you, you might not have that right now but if you take up your value to a point where you believe that you're allowed to have that and you're worthy of having a healthy relationship and healthy friendships and like you are allowed to have people around you that celebrate you you know and you should love to have people around that you know celebrate themselves and like want you to celebrate yourself you know that's like that's the healthy way to live. So yeah, I just want to touch into this because I mean, every year I lose friends and every year I make more friends, but the more and more years that I get on my life, um, like I say that, like, like, oh, I got more years, like, yay. No, like the more and more years that pass, like the more I realize, like, I swear you'll think they're your friend. And they're not. And this is not a pity party. This isn't like, oh, like, I thought they were my friend. Like, you know, yeah, it's sad. But at the same time, like, there's people out there that just know how great you are. And they just need to have you in their life. And they don't really, like, have any intention on in treating you right. Or being nice to you. Or celebrating your victories. Or growing with you as a person. They just want to have a piece of you. Because, you know, they just need to have your energy or they just want in on something or they just need to be loved by everyone that's around them or you know or there's just people that like they don't like really have anything better to do and they just want to take up your time but you have better things to do you know so or there's people that are really your your enemies they like they want to bring you down for whatever reason they don't have anything better to do with their time and other than scheme on how to like keep you there you know and it's like there's people that do this and I think that you know in my naive mind at one point I was like you know what no everybody has a good side like everybody's good in a way you know and I wasn't accepting of the fact that there are people that want the worst for you and that is I think the more that we normalize you know talking about things that people do that are kind of like really frowned upon and bad in really emotional situations such as friendship and relationships i think the more awareness we bring to these things the more time that all of us are going to save not feeding into these kinds of things for ourselves because we all know what authenticity looks like and genuinity like knowing what genuine people do and look like and knowing how you want to be treated and having those boundaries to support that you're going to save yourself so much emotion so much time and effort and confusion going into these people that are just kind of dead-ended dead-ended people or hole in the bottom of the cup people where you're just pouring it in and it's just all going out and no matter how much you pour in it's never enough like your friends should never be getting mad at you for living your best life or being with other friends or you know just 
just being happy and like doing what you want like really like the only reason that your friends should ever get mad at you in the other way around vice versa is like are you hurting somebody are you going against the moral are you going against the boundary that they have like and the same for you like that's like you should have friends where it's very clear on like what your standards for one another are and i think a lot of people save that kind of like expectations and behavior and like you know investigation part of themselves like their little fbi agent in them everyone always saves that for like their relationship but it's like really we should look at the people that are surrounding us the most because at the end of the day that's the people that's going to be with us in the lowest moments and our best moments and those are two very vulnerable places and they're also going to be there when we need advice and it's like you really got to look at who you're getting advice from who's around you because that will affect your mood it'll affect your life and i have quite a few story times to tell on these kind of things so if you are confused about friendships or you want to know more about like um this channel is supposed to be really like a learning experience i'm not going to be like being super negative on here but i'm also not going to be unrealistically positive like i've had some really traumatic experiences happen with friends and i've had a lot of friends you know fail and i will share those stories for the sake of you know maybe helping someone else and preventing that happening to them for sure i would love to share those so uh for now we're just gonna go with this basic basic like guideline to picking your surroundings and your friends and who you really allow to have access to you so i hope this helped uh, i really appreciate you guys listening uh, I love you guys and I hope you have uh, a great week and happy friend hunting because it's rough out there. But it doesn't have to be if you follow these guidelines and look out for yourself. So, yeah. Okay, that's all I got to say. Okay, bye. <laughs>